Good morning from Boston Harbor. Thank you to, to PASS. Thank you to Bishop Chancellor Marcelo Sanchez Orondo. Thank you to the SDN, the SDSN and SDSN youth for inviting me. Today, cities and communities the world over are facing three wicked pandemics, threatening the flourishing and agency of youth and emerging adults everywhere. First is the global novel COVID-19 pandemic. Second is the not so novel, indeed centuries old pandemic of racism, xenophobia and racialized inequality, threatening now the practice of democratic citizenship in so many nations around the world. Third is the pandemic of unchecked climate change, now posing a grave threat to all life on planet Earth. All three pandemics have youth at the center. While there are now vaccines to confront COVID-19, the vaccines for the other two pandemics will flow, I firmly believe, from this most worthy and indeed most revolutionary of all sustainable development goals, SDG 4.7, and Pope Francis's Global Compact on Education. Together, these initiatives endeavoring to ensure all learners, all citizens, all lifelong learners acquire the knowledge, the sensibilities, the skills needed to promote sustainable development, a sustainable humanity, and offer esperanza as the Holy Father Pope Francis noted yesterday. First, the COVID-19 pandemic has now invaded cities and communities the world over, leaving in its wake death, untold suffering and economic havoc affecting all, but above all, our most vulnerable communities. We must confront with eyes wide open the enormous pain and suffering, the grave educational and mental health sequela the pandemic has brought to youth and emerging adults the world over. As the Holy Father noted yesterday, cientos de millones de niños se han quedado atrás en las oportunidades de desarrollo social y cognitivo. Indeed, the Holy Father is right. The most up-to-date global data suggests that the pandemic's devastation has identified, has intensified, intensified educational and mental health crisis already facing too many of our disadvantaged youth. Global data reveal the enduring struggles with mental and behavioral health issues associated with the coronavirus disease, including marked elevation in mood disorders, anxiety, depression, but also increased substance and suicidal ideation. The mental health penalties imposed by the pandemic are disproportionately paid by young and emerging adults, immigrants and refugees, indigenous and minoritized communities. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, youth have been more likely than any age group to struggle with anxiety and depression. Most alarming, data suggests that the rates of suicidal ideation are highest among youth, especially LGBTQ youth. In September 2020, reliable data report that over half of young people in the United States reported having thoughts of suicide or self-harm nearly every day during the previous two weeks. Therefore, in the spirit of Pope Francis's compact, Global Compact on Education and SDG 4.7, cities and communities, must now make mental health, mental health services via education as well as other institutional vehicles and settings, a numero uno urgent priority. By taking them from schools, the pandemic has robbed youth and emerging adults of significant socio-emotional supports at great costs to them. Today, more than ever, nurturing socio-emotional learning, including in the wise words of Pope Francis, patient listening, I'm quoting now, 
patient listening, constructive dialogue, and better mutual understanding is indeed urgent. But racism, xenophobia, and anti-blackness now is a health crisis the world over, especially in the high income countries in the world. As the Holy Father taught us yesterday, quote, debemos actuar con esperanza para que los impulsos de odio, divisiones e ignorancia puedan ser superados a través de una nueva buena onda. Digamos así, una nueva buena onda de oportunidades educativas basadas en la justicia social y en el amor mutuo, end of quote. Cities, municipalities and communities need, are now acting and enacting anti-racist, anti-xenophobic practices with clear objectives and transparent goals. Racism, xenophobia, hatred, stand in complete opposition to a civilization and to the elemental requirements for the practice of democratic citizenship. The third pandemic is the pandemic we know well and check climate change. A year ago, in the largest ever youth demonstrations in history, young people took to the streets by the millions to articulate in hundreds of different languages and in cities, big and small, on every continent on earth, sending the world a public powerful message. We must act on climate change now. They're right. Climate change has already morphed into climate disruption, bringing with it extreme weather events the world over. Young people are struggling to make sense of the planet's finality. While all youth come to contemplate the morality of their, the mortality of their parents and loved ones, eventually their own mortality, the mortality of the planet is not easily grasped. In Thank their collective so cry, they're articulating the existential terror of planetary death. Thank you so much.